Hello, I'm Dr. David Schneider, one of the endocrine surgeons here at the University of Wisconsin. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about parathyroidectomy. We'll review the procedure as well as some of the risks of the surgery. We take a minimally invasive approach regardless of how many glands need to be removed. This means the incision or cut is very small, only one to two inches. We hide it in a skin crease that is hard to see once it's healed. The incision sits low in the neck as is shown here. Here is an example of one of my patients. You can hardly see her scar six months after surgery. During the surgery, we only remove enough glands to cure you. Removing too much can actually cause more risks. We use an ultrasound and other imaging before the surgery to find out how many glands are abnormal. After removing an abnormal gland, we have a number of tests to make sure we have removed all of the diseased glands. For example, we will do blood tests to check your parathyroid levels during the operation. Also, we use a special parathyroid probe to help determine if you have more than one diseased gland. Our expertise and judgment from our vast experience in treating thousands of patients will ensure the surgery is most successful for you. There are risks when having this surgery. You only have four parathyroid glands. We cannot remove or damage all four glands or you will have low calcium levels. We normally expect lower than normal calcium levels in the first week after surgery. This may last longer than a week or even a few months for some patients. The good news is that it's rare for low calcium levels to last longer than six months or to be permanently low. We are also very careful about the nerve to the voice box. As you can see here, the nerve travels right near the thyroid and the parathyroids. Damage to this nerve causes a hoarse voice after surgery. Some people have short-term voice changes before going back to normal. There is a 1-2% to 2 chance of hoarseness being permanent. If this does happen to you, we can do more procedures to try and fix the problem. Even when things go perfectly with the surgery, there's always a low chance that this could come back in the future. It's usually one of the other glands that acts up. We can fix it again, but it does require another surgery. Although the first surgery is almost always successful, 1-2% to 2 of patients are not cured. In those cases, it usually means the gland is in a very unusual place and more surgery is needed. We will always work to make sure that we find it and eventually achieve success. Rarely, there can be other complications. This can include problems with the incision, bleeding in the neck, or infections. These issues are very rare with parathyroid surgery with less than a 1% chance of each of those things happening. We will discuss your risk for these issues before the surgery. We typically perform this surgery as an outpatient. This means that you get to go home the same day as the surgery. When you go home, you're eating, drinking, walking, talking, doing pretty much all the things you were doing before the surgery. You will be tired, but most people are back to their usual activities in about a week or so. There are a few restrictions after the surgery. First, do not lift 20 pounds or more for two weeks. Second, do not soak underwater like in a bathtub or a pool. However, you may shower. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a little bit more about parathyroidectomy. As always, please contact us if you have other questions or concerns. We look forward to treating your parathyroid problem here at UW Health.